From WFRB-TV Local 5, your local election headquarters, this is Newsmaker Sunday with your host, Tom Zalaski. Good morning. Welcome to Newsmaker Sunday. I'm Tom Zalaski. The battle to slow the spread of the coronavirus continues in Northeast Wisconsin, also in America and all around the world. Here are the basics. Wisconsin is in a safer at home order until at least Friday, April 24th. This has caused a flood of layoffs with the state unemployment rate standing at 11% from February. Nationally, 6.6 .6 million Americans filed unemployment claims last week. And economic experts say this number is higher than the total number of job losses during the entire Great Recession. Joining us by Skype to discuss the impact of this pandemic, Northeast Wisconsin's representative in Washington, Congressman Mike Gallagher. Congressman, good to have you back with us once again. I take it you were, uh, are at home this morning, this, uh, this day? I am. You are uh, joining me in my basement here, so sorry <laughs> that I can't be with you in person. In the Congressman's man cave. What, what have you been doing with your time? Uh, well, I've been trying to serve a useful role in terms of one, providing accurate information to all of the citizens of Northeast Wisconsin. I know there is a lot of disinformation out there right now, particularly on social media. And so really, I think every member of Congress, myself especially, can act as a node between the actual experts at the CDC, the FDA, uh, and at the state level, in our own health department at the state level, and convey that good information to every Northeast Wisconsinite so every single citizen is armed with the information they need to do their part in fighting and ultimately defeating this disease. Additionally, I'm proud to say that the entire Wisconsin delegation, Democrats and Republicans, are really coming together to try and make sure that Wisconsin gets its share of supplies, for example, from the national strategic stockpile. We still have shortfalls in our ability to do testing here because there's single points of failure in the testing supply chain. And so really, we're trying to work together to iron that out and make sure Wisconsin is as prepared as possible for the worst case scenario. And then finally, my entire staff is still working. We're doing it remotely mostly. So if there are any constituents out there that need basic help, basic services, help getting their social security check, help getting their VA care. Uh, my team still stands ready to do that. And we're also coordinating a donation drive in partnership with the Brown County Health Department where people, if they have an extra box of gloves or an extra box of masks, and they wanna donate it to those on the front lines, particularly our, our doctors, our nurses, our cops, our firefighters, they can contact my office or they can email wi08donations at gmail.com. That's wi08donations at gmail.com. We will schedule a time where we can pick that up in a way that's safe and socially distant. And we're going to make sure we get that equipment to the people on the front lines that are fighting this to keep us safe. Congressman, the $2 trillion stimulus package, it was passed and signed by the president. Uh, what have you been told about the distribution of the money, getting it to the people who need it to make ends meet? Well, I think the, the most important and immediate uh, appropriation of money is going to be the $100 billion that goes to the healthcare system and the providers. My own simplistic view of this is until we get control of the disease, you know, we're going to be struggling to get control of our economy. And the quicker we can defeat the disease, the quicker our economy will recover. Now, that being said, on the economic side, we are working right now with the Treasury Secretary to make sure that that $1,200, for example, for individuals who qualify based on their income level last year is getting out the door immediately in the form of a direct deposit and not with a complicated tax rebate schedule. And so people have the cash they need in hand in order to weather this crisis. Additionally, because there's been a lot of small businesses in Northeast Wisconsin, you know, think your restaurants, your bars, your smaller manufacturers that have been forced to close down as we all do our part to slow the spread. We do have a massive new Small Business Administration loan program to the tune of $350 billion where we're trying to get those loans out to companies that need it right now in a matter of days, not weeks. And if they're able to keep their employees on the payroll, keep them healthy and whole, there's a chance that those loans will be forgiven on the back end. Now, there's other things in the bill that may take a little bit more time, but certainly the intent by everybody at the federal level is to help those who need it most immediately and not have to wait three months to get that help because that's going to be too late. 
Now, there was talk this week in the House and Senate of another $2 trillion stimulus package for infrastructure this time. Uh, your stand on that portion of the relief package. Well, given that we just passed the biggest spending bill in American history, and as you alluded to in your earlier question, the money isn't even out the door and we don't have a sense of the good, the bad, and the ugly in terms of what's working and what isn't, I do think it's a little premature to talk about spending another $2 trillion without knowing how successful we are right now in the fight against coronavirus. I would also say I was disheartened to see from the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, in the last bill we passed, an effort to insert a wish list of progressive items that I think would have the practical effect of politicizing this issue. And I don't think it should be politicized. And my hope, but unfortunately, this is what I'm seeing so far, is that she doesn't try and take those wish list of items and then make that the basis for a 4.0 bill. I think we need to focus every marginal dollar, every marginal minute we have on how do we control this disease, how do we defeat this disease, and how do we help those people that the government has forced to shut down in order to slow the spread of the disease, how do we give them just compensation so that when we're on the other side of this, we can start to get our economy moving again and with it protect our own livelihoods and that of our families here in Northeast Wisconsin. And it seems like this situation is changing, you know, day to day, even hour by hour. Uh, with that in mind, now that the stimulus bill has been passed, what's the next step that uh, Congress needs to take to deal with the impact of this whole thing? Well, I think there's a few different things we can do. I think everybody, and not just Congress, it's certainly the executive branch, the White House task force being led by Vice President Pence, but our own state health department. I think now is the time for total transparency. We need to give the American people an honest assessment, not just every day at a press conference, but in near real time, levering, leveraging some of the best technology we have right now in order to track things like the number of cases, uh, the number of deaths, uh, the uh, uh, roadblocks to getting the supplies we need, the basic personal protective equipment, where our hospitals stand. Now is the time to tell everybody, here's how we're doing in this massive whole of society effort. And here's where we might have some shortfalls or additional hurdles that we need to climb. And so I hope that the governor will take that to heart. I hope the president will take that to heart. And that's related to really, I think, the second line of effort, which is to say, you know, I've been really encouraged by not only the enormous sacrifice I've seen here in Northeast Wisconsin, but the enormous generosity that we've seen here. I mean, so many people are trying to, for example, turn their manufacturing company that doesn't really do anything in the medical industry, turn it around so it can start producing masks and ventilators and things like that. There are a ton of people here that are stepping up to help their fellow citizens. That's a good thing. But I do think if you're going to ask Wisconsinites to sacrifice or Americans to sacrifice, you need to show them a light at the end of the tunnel. Let's start talking through what does phase two of this process look like? Once we get more data from testing, is there a situation where we could start saying to people that have recovered or are in the healthier population, you can go back to work? Or we could start saying to our businesses, hey, we still need you to do social distancing, but we want you to do it in a way that makes sense for your organization. And we trust that you can figure that out better than any member of Congress, better than any governor, better than any president. And finally, perhaps most importantly, can we figure out on a district by district basis, how can we make sure our kids who are now at home from school finish the school year and don't fall further behind? I think that's really a big effort we need to give people hope, give them that light at the end of the tunnel. We can't just simply stay shut in for months and months and months. You talk about the roadblocks in getting personal protective equipment out there. Uh, is there a need for legislation to make that happen, or are companies kind of falling in line on their own? Well, we've, uh, one, uh, passed legislation to appropriate the money to buy it. As far as companies falling in line on their own, the president has invoked what's called the Defense Production Act, which gives him enormous authority in order to tell companies that aren't cooperating that they need to start producing at certain levels. This is really an extraordinary and you know out of the ordinary thing that we wouldn't ordinarily grant the president this power, but this is obviously a very unusual situation right now. So I don't think there's a need for additional legislation on that in the immediate. However, I will say over the long term, in order to ensure that we never find ourselves in another situation like this where we're dependent on foreign manufacturers for basic pharmaceutical goods, 
basic medical devices that we can't even make here domestically, even if we wanted to, that is just that makes us dangerously dependent, which is why I've introduced a bill with Senator Tom Cotton that would make it the goal of our country to bring a lot of that pharmaceutical manufacturing, most of which is in China right now, back to the United States or at least to countries that won't threaten to cut off their exports we're in crisis, while we're in crisis. Because what we're seeing right now is Chinese Communist Party officials threatening to cut off their supply of drugs to the United States and thereby plunge us into a sea of coronavirus, as they've called it. That is simply unacceptable. And we're going to have to spend the next decade thinking about how can we be more resilient here in terms of our domestic economy? And how can we make more things that we depend on right here in Wisconsin and not in China? And we continue our conversation with Congressman Mike Gallagher. When we come back, stay with us.